Well, good morning everyone and welcome to Psalm of the Day. Today it's Psalm 21. Now I have a friend who is a keen Liverpool fan and as this season has progressed, Liverpool have grown stronger and stronger. It seemed even to him that victory was almost certain. 25 points clear with nine games to go. Surely nothing could stop or shake them. But on March the 13th, the Premier League was postponed and we're still not sure if the season will be completed. Victory is not so secure. And some of you may be asking, <laughs> does it really matter? Well, Psalm 21 is all about a secure victory. Listen to the opening line. The King rejoices in your strength, Lord. How great is his joy in the victories you give. And the first half of the psalm celebrates what the Lord has done for his anointed king. He asked you for life and you gave it to him, length of days for ever and ever. Through the victories you gave, his glory is great. You've bestowed on him splendour and majesty. Surely you've granted him unending blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. Now the language is extravagant, even for David's victories, isn't it? Length of days for ever and ever? Unending blessings? Isn't David going over the top here? Not if we realise that this poem is a prophecy, pointing to the glorious victories of the son of David. Through his resurrection and exaltation, God the Father has given Jesus Christ length of days for ever and ever. It's just as the angel announced to Mary, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. His kingdom will never end. No ifs or buts, no maybes or fingers crossed, no sudden postponement because of a pandemic. The message of the gospel is that God has given Jesus great victory, glory, splendour and majesty. And we can rejoice as Christians this morning in this certainty. But then you might say, as I do sometimes, so what? Does it really matter? Could this be a bit like the football season? which they're planning to finish behind closed doors. Is Jesus' victory a bit like that? No one will really see it. Not at all. The second half of the psalm is all about what the king will do in the strength of the Lord. Notice the future tense in verse 8. Your hand will lay hold on all your enemies. Your right hand will seize your foes. Though they plot evil against you and devise wicked schemes, they cannot succeed. Now we may find this strong language describing Messiah's destruction of his enemies disturbing, but it's exactly the same in the New Testament. The Apostle tells us, God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire with his powerful angels. He will punish those who do not know God and do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Does Liverpool's victory matter? Not really, nor any other football team for that matter. Does Jesus' victory matter? Yes, he will not be shaken. People need to believe the gospel by turning to trust in King Jesus. It's a fearful thing to be his enemy, but it's a wonderful thing to be his friend. Be exalted in your strength, Lord. We will sing and praise your might. Amen.